This is part 103 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to display both images and text in the suggestions menu of jQuery autocomplete widget. Let me explain what I mean. On the web page right here, we've got a text box where we can type the name of the country. As soon as we start to type the first character of a country name, then we want to retrieve all the country names that start with that letter and then display the respective country flag and the country name in the suggestions menu as you can see here. We want all this data to be coming from a database table. So on the left hand side here, we have a database table with three columns. So the first column is the ID of the country, the name of the country and the third column contains the path to the respective country flag. So let's see how to achieve this. The first step here is to create this database table itself, which I have already done. And here we have the create table script. Another thing that I have done is created the stored procedure. Notice the stored procedure has got a single input parameter name. For example, if we pass letter C as the value for this name parameter, then this stored procedure is going to retrieve all the country names that start with letter C. Notice here we are using the SQL Server like operator along with the wildcard symbol. So for example, if we pass letter C as the value and if we execute the stored procedure, notice that we get all the countries that start with letter C. So now let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I have an ASP.NET web application project. Within the web.config file, I have included a connection string to our sample DB database. So the next step is to add a folder to this project and this folder is going to store all the respective country flags. So I'm going to name it flags and on my local machine here within the images folder I have four different country flags. So I'm going to copy these flags and paste them into this flags folder within our project. Okay, so we've got four country flags. So if you look at the data right here, look at the flag path. So this flags folder, this is actually present within the root directory of a web application project. And the path is like flags forward slash flags forward slash the name of the country dot PNG, right? So we have those respective flags right here. So these paths should match, you know, the data that we have here. All right. The next step is to add a class file to a project and let's name this country.cs and this class is going to have three properties and the first one is going to be of type integer and this is going to be the ID of the country and the next property is going to be of type string and let's name it name so this is going to represent the name of the country and finally flag path. Okay, so these three properties within this class represent these three columns in this table. So we have our country class here. The next step is to add a web service to our project and this web service is going to talk to the database and retrieve the country data from our country's table. So let's go ahead and add our web service and let's name this country service dot ASMX. And we want this web service to be callable from script, so I'm going to uncomment this attribute right here. So we're going to write some ADO.NET code, and in the interest of time, I have already typed the required ADO.NET namespaces here. So we need system.configuration, system.data, system.data.sql client, and system.web.script.serialization namespaces. And let's go ahead and change the name of this function to make it meaningful. So we want to retrieve countries, so I'm going to call this get countries and we don't want this function to be returning a string we are not going to return anything and we don't want to retrieve all the countries we only want to retrieve those countries which match the characters that the user has typed so we are going to pass a parameter which is going to contain those characters and let's name this term and within the function we are going to write some ado.net code again in the interest of time I have typed all the required ADO.NET code. So I'm going to copy and paste that here. And if you look at this, this is straightforward ADO.NET code. So we are reading the connection string from web.config file. And then we are creating a list of country object. We named it countries. So this object is going to store the countries that we want to return back. And then we are creating a SQL connection object. 
and then creating a SQL command object. Using this SQL command object, we want to execute the stored procedure, SP get countries that we have here. And since that is a stored procedure, we are telling that the command object using the command type property. And this stored procedure has got a single input parameter name. So we have to create a SQL parameter object. The name of the parameter is name. And the value is coming from this term parameter. Okay, And then we are associating this parameter object with the command object, opening the connection, executing the command, and then we are looping through each row that we retrieve from the DBA, creating a country object, populating all its three properties, that is ID, name, and flag path, and adding that country object to the country's collection object that we have created here. Once we are done looping through and adding all the country objects to the countries, then we are passing that to the serialize method of the JavaScript serializer class, which is going to serialize the country's object to a JSON string and write it to the current response stream. So let's go ahead and quickly test our web service. So now to this web service, we should be able to pass you know, the country name characters like letter C, for example. And we should get back all the countries that start with letter C. All right, so our web service is working. Now let's go on to the web page itself. So we need some text to prompt the user to enter country name and then a text box. Let's give an ID to the text box. Let's call it txt name and the type is going to be text. Okay, and within our jQuery ready function, let's find the text box using its ID. So the ID is txt name. And on that, I'm going to call jQuery autocomplete widget function. And we need to specify our options just like any other jQuery UI widget. So the first option here is going to be min length. So as soon as we type one character, we want the suggestion. So the minimum length is going to be one. And the source for the data. So what is the source going to be? The source is actually going to be a function. And this function is going to have two parameters, the request object and the response function. Now what we want to do, we want this function to actually issue an AJAX call and retrieve data from the web service. So let's use the jQuery AJAX function and we have to specify the options for this AJAX function. The first option is going to be the URL that we want to call. So the URL is going to be our country web service, so country service dot ASMX. So that's the web service that we want to call. And within that web service, we have a function. And the name of the function is getCountries. So let's copy that. So that's the URL we want to call. And we want to issue a POST request. So method is going to be POST. And the data that we want to send to the server is so if you look at this get countries function, it has got a parameter and the name of the parameter is term. So we want to send the data to that parameter. So term is the parameter. And where is the value going to come from? Now the value, the user will type it in the text box. So there are several ways you can retrieve it from the text box. And one simple way is by using this request object. So this request object is going to have term property. And that property will have the value that the user has typed in the text box. Okay, And so that's the data we want to send to the server. And what is the data type that we are expecting back from the server? We are expecting JSON data. Once the request completes successfully, then we want to receive that. So let's associate a callback function. So this is the function that will be called when the request completes successfully. And this data parameter is going to receive that data from the web service. What are we going to do with that data? We are going to pass that to this response function. So we have a response function here. Let's pass that to that function. Now, what we are passing to this response function, so this is going to determine what to do with that data. It will be displayed as suggestions within the text box. But then this object, it's actually a JSON array that contains you know, country objects. And country object is a complex property, a complex object. And we have not specified which properties of that complex object should be displayed as suggestions. 
right so in order to do that and in order to control what is displayed as suggestions within the suggestions menu we are going to extend one of the extensibility points that are available within this autocomplete widget one of the extensibility point is underscore render item method so basically this method controls the creation of items that are displayed in the suggestions menu so let's go ahead and extend that function and the way we do that is look at this this autocomplete call you know the function is ending here so I'm going to remove that semicolon there and then press dot and call autocomplete function once again and we want to extend the current instance so this instance of the autocomplete widget and the function that we want to extend is underscore render item so that is going to be a function and this function is going to have two parameters the unordered list and the item so what is this item parameter now what is the data that we are passing to this the JSON array which contain complex country object right and this item is going to represent each of that country object so now from this item property we can retrieve the ID of the country the name of the country the flag path as well so this item represents each of that country object and what is this unordered list now this is going to represent each item in the suggestions menu so what we are going to do here is we have to create a list item and that list item will contain whatever HTML that we want to display as suggestion and you want to append that to this unordered list and return that so we have to create an unordered list so for that first we need to create a list item so I'm going to create a list item li and what do you want within this list item now what do we want to display we want to display the country flag and you know the name of the country so to this um, on our uh, list item I'm actually going to append an image element so let's create an image element and an image should have a source so image source equals and where are we going to get the source now if you look at this flag path property of the country object that has the image source right so it has the image path so what I'm going to do is use this property and retrieve the respective country image path so we have this item object which is representing each country object the data that we received from the server and we know that it will have this flag path property and that will be the source for the image okay and to that let's also say for example if the image is not found then we want to display the alternate text for the image and if you want what you can do is you can have another column in the table and specify what you want as the alternate text here but to keep this example simple I'm going to use the name of the image as the alternate text which will be displayed in case if the image is not found for some reason so alternate text equals item dot name okay so we have the image element source attribute is set alternate attribute is set all that is left is now is to close that image element okay so within the list item at the moment we've got an image element so we need a plus symbol here and to this next to the image what do we want we want the name of the country right so I'm going to append an anchor element so let's create an anchor element and inside that anchor element I want to display the name of the country and then let's close the anchor element okay so what do we want to do with all this HTML so within the list item we have the image which will display the country flag and then we have the name of the country we want to append this to this unordered list and return that so we have the return keyword here on the front so all this HTML I'm going to append to the unordered list and we will return all that HTML so this is what now is controlling what will be displayed in the suggestion menu so we are extending underscore render item function so with all this let's go ahead and run our page now look at this as soon as we type letter C now we are getting the country flag and the name of the country right now the images are of different sizes so it's not pretty so what we want is something like this you know a consistent image size so to control the height and width what I'm going to do here is specify a style class within our page 
So let's include a style section and I'm going to include a class. Let's call this image class. You can give it any meaningful name you want. And what do we want to do? We want to set the width. So let's set the width to 16 pixels maybe and height also to 16 pixels and now between the image and the name of the country we want some space so for the image I'm going to set padding right to 3 pixels maybe so padding right 3 pixels alright and I'm going to apply this image class to our image element right here so I'm going to set the class attribute and the class is going to be image class so let's save our changes reload this page and look at this when we type letter C now we have consistent size but there is a shortcoming here now look at this as the items in the suggestions menu receive focus the text of the country you know whatever item you have selected it's not updated within the text box we want that to be updated now when an item in the suggestions menu receive focus um, it raises an event and that's called the focus event let's go ahead and handle that focus event so I'm going to handle the focus event and this is going to be a function and again this function is going to have two parameters the event object and the UI element that triggered the event so what do we want to do you know when an element receives focus now the text box so this is going to reference the text box on which we are calling autocomplete that is our txt name text box so we want to set a value for that and the value is going to be so we are going to make use of this UI so basically that's the element that triggered the event and this is going to have item property and the item here again represents our complex country object and that has name property so we want to display the name you know in the text box as the items in the suggestions menu receive focus and final thing that you want to do here is return false from this function okay so let's save our changes reload this page and look at this as we type and as we scroll now look at this as the item receives focus that's updated within the text box now look at this when I select an item you know the selected item is not populated here so we have to handle another event to make that happen so there is another event called select so this is triggered whenever you know we select an item from the suggestions menu so the event handler is going to be very similar alright so let's save the changes reload this page and look at this when we type letter C you know when we select a an item that item is populated in the text box now this is a bit of a redundant code we can actually move it to a common function if we want so within our jQuery ready function let's create another function let's call this update text box and within this function so this function is going to have these two parameters you want and the UI object so let's pass those two parameters and then we will you know copy this common code right here and then we can specify this function you know as an event handler so now you know that duplication is removed alright so let's save our changes let's run this page one more time and it should behave exactly the same way okay now for some reason you know in the suggestions menu at the moment look at this we have an image and the country name for some reason if you also want the country ID along with the country name you know you can very easily change you know the code within this function let's say I want item dot ID so to that we want to append maybe a dash and then the country name okay so now what is this going to do this is going to display the country ID as well as country name and the flag okay and within the text box if you want country ID dash country name then you can update that right here within the function so here we are just populating a UI dot item dot name if you want the ID as well you can do UI dot item dot ID plus 
you know let's append a dash and then the name of the country so now the text box should receive both the country ID and the country name so here we have the web service code here we have the jQuery code HTML and CSS thank you for listening and have a great day